Today, I'm gonna to go over the questions I had before I purchased this DJI FPV quad that I didn't have the answers to, but I have them now. I've been flying FPV quads for quite some time, and this is my first experience with the DJI digital goggles. I tell you, it's like watching your TV set. It's kind of unbelievable, and it takes a little while to get used to because your field of view is so large. Had a few problems with the goggles when I first got them with light leaks around the edges, which is a common complaint. There's some 3D printed shims. I tried those, those didn't work, but luckily DJI came up with a product that's a soft foam. I purchased that, and then I took the original foam and cut it to fit the nose piece. And that works well for me. Everybody's face is different. The other thing I wasn't real keen on was the strap. I purchased this fat strap. It's uh, made in Florida. Had a small problem with it where it would loosen up and I printed a TPU sleeve here that keeps it from loosening up. I'll put the STL file to that as well as the G-code for the Ender 3 printer for those of you who like my 3D printing options. The other thing is you always want to make sure that you protect the lenses and I came up with this 3D printed TPU shield that protects the lenses. That goes in here like this. The questions I had with the DJI system that I couldn't get answered were, how does it work? Well, when you turn on the quad, I was curious, does the gimbal follow? your that's pretty cool isn't it does the gimbal itself actually follow the quad or is it fixed well the answer to that is is yes what it does is in normal mode and in sport mode it will actually hold whatever angle that you program it to as far as the angle in the goggles and you can it defaults to zero but you can pitch it up a little bit or down a little bit but as the quad changes its attitude it keeps it normal so that's great for filming and all then when you put it in the manual mode, it will actually lock like a standard FPV camera and stay locked and you can change the angle while you're flying. So if you decide you want to do a fast run, you can pop it up to 25 or 30 degrees and almost uh, 60 degrees. Mine will go to 59 degrees, but that's quite a good angle. One of the other questions I had was, is the props are always in the video. Yes, you can uh, change that in post-production, but I found if you film in 1080p that the props are not in it as well as the goggles are not quite as large a field of view and if you're coming from standard FPV flying, I think you might like that mode to begin with. So let's go ahead and let's get this in the air and take a few flights. I'm already very familiar with flying DJI products and I was a little concerned with this one because it is an FPV drone and from what I did see on other reviews you can make the throttle stick act just like a normal FPV quad where you have zero and a hundred. I was concerned operating it in normal mode or sport mode which I might want to do for photography to have the gimbal so it automatically stabilizes might be difficult to do. It's actually not, it's quite natural once you get used to it and it's actually kind of a neat feature because when you go to land in normal mode, you can put the stick all the way down and it'll land. I'm gonna go ahead and move my sticks apart just like normal here. And I'm moving the throttle up. When I get to 50%, it actually starts to take off. Now when I bring the quad back down to the ground, see it's constantly going down if I move the stick down and it gets to a point where it won't want to land because it actually has sensors on the bottom and this is in normal mode. For auto landing, you just push the stick down and now it'll land itself. The motors will automatically turn off, which is a neat feature. Now, I normally take off in normal mode or sport mode, and then you can switch the manual mode. Well, you can also take off in full manual mode if you want to. You just move your controller here to manual mode. Then you tap this button twice. So when I press the button twice, it's just like pressing an arm switch on a normal FPV controller. Now you ask, how do you stop it? Two clicks. So it's very similar to a regular FPV. My problem I have is this 
motor on and off is on the opposite side from my arm switch. Most people use the arm switch on this side of their controller, but it's actually well thought out. DJI did a great job. On this side here is the pause button, and that was one of my other questions. I call it an air brake, but it's actually a pause button. The pause button does work in any mode. So if you're in normal mode, sport mode, or manual mode, you can be upside down and press this button. The quad will right itself and will stay at that attitude and hover there until it runs out of battery and wants to land. So there's a lot of neat bailout functions. One of the things that I found interesting in the display on the goggles, it does have an altitude. When you get below, I would say about three feet, it turns to red so you know where you're at. It is a little hard to judge where the quad is because the screen is so large for going through obstacles and I'll master that in time. But let's go ahead and take another flight here. So I'll switch it back to normal mode. Now I'm taking off. It's saying I'm four feet above the ground. Hopefully I am. We'll run it out here. So I can just fly it right up here and hit the parking brake. And on the screen it says aircraft braking, which is nice, and it's saying I'm at 4.9 feet. If I raise it up, now it's at 6 feet, so it goes red below 6 feet. So, below 6 feet, it goes red. Isn't that cool? How many quads can you fly in manual mode and then turn around and have it land automatically? From DJI, this quad is only available in normal and sport mode. You have to activate the manual mode. I'm sure there's several tutorials out there. All you have to do is your mode switch is configure it to manual mode. Once you get in the manual mode, you'll see that there's actually three different things that you can change in manual mode, or actually four. One of them is the angle in manual mode, which you can't turn off until you've done one manual mode flight. What that does is it actually limits the angle of flight. So the first flight, it's only gonna give you about a 45 degree pitch forward, and it feels really strange to somebody who's used to flying in full acro with a regular FPV. Once you turn that off, it feels natural. The rates are fairly low. They're defaulting to 420, so when you move the stick, the full deflection to one side, in one second, it's going to turn 420 degrees. So it will do a full rate, but I fly FPVs, mainly freestyle, and my rates I deem kind of low, and I normally fly around 700. So this is very low, but it does feel faster because the stick throw is very short compared to my FR Sky uh, transmitter that I normally fly with. I've turned the Expo down on it. I've got the yaw, which is your can't right to left here. I have that on zero because I like it to be very precise for tight turns. And I've dropped it down to 0.1 or 10% for the pitch and roll. These seem to be pretty good. I've only flown the quad in my yard. So now we're going to fly it a little bit more and play with those rates a little bit. Okay, I've got it in full manual mode. Let's take a flight. I'm going to press the record button here, start the recording. It will record in the goggles as well as on the craft if you have an SD card in the goggle. We'll go ahead and take off. It says the home point's been updated, which is really nice. And I tell you, it's just really strange getting used to the vision that this has. Uh, I usually have the artificial horizon in there. And I tell you, this quad is really fast. I think what's different about it is the angle of the motors are slightly different. They're not flat on a frame like a normal quad is. So let's go ahead and let's try a punch out. Seems good. 
It's not really good for a 6S. I would expect it to have more punch out than it is right now, but it's not bad. You've got to consider what this quad is meant to do. This is for filming as well as having a little fun. It's nice because you can, you can bring this with you and not have to do anything as far as have 27 batteries. I'm at 69% battery and I've had this thing armed for quite a while. Now, I like to have the yaw to zero, and you can see how fast. In fact, I just overshot that a whole bunch. Now, we'll keep this nice and short. As you can see, it flies very well in manual mode, but at any given point, I'm gonna come forward. Let me get a, let me get a running start on this here just to show how the air brake actually works. And as you see, it just went ahead and it threw on the parking brake. Now it defaults to normal mode. It's still in manual mode here. You can drive the quad or pilot the quad in normal mode until you land. Or if you want, you can flip the switch back. But what I'll do for this demonstration is I'll bring it home line of sight here. And then I'm just going to move the stick down. And it lands and turns off. Now one thing that I just found out about the quad, we're still in manual mode here. If I press the motor arming button twice, it doesn't arm. You have to move it back to sport or normal mode before you move it back to manual mode before it will allow you to arm the motors again. So now we're off for our next flight. I purchased the Fly More kit, which gave me two extra batteries, so I was able to fly out three batteries and have a little bit of time to get my rates going. The rates I ended up with are my defaults for my normal FPV flying, which are 700 for the pitch and roll, and around 650 for the yaw. My Expo settings are zero for all three axes, and I didn't really have time to play with the center stick dead zone, but it felt really good, as you can see, my, my flips seem to be fairly precise for only flying the quad for three to four batteries. I found out something interesting about the DJI FPV drone. When you go up to do a dive, if you hit the maximum flight altitude, like here, listen to what happens. And there you go, the quad got all squirrely because it went into normal mode. If you hit the maximum altitude, it, it shuts down. If you have any questions that I haven't covered, Make sure you leave them down in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll do my best to answer everybody's question about this new FPV quad. My first impressions are really good with this because of the simplicity of the quad itself. You don't have to worry about beta flight and tuning. There are two different things. If somebody's looking to get in the FPV, this may not be the best way to get in the FPV because of the cost of the quad itself. I would recommend something like a Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. You can buy a kit with the goggles and the transmitter. Get your feet wet before you get into something that's a little bit more expensive. But there's definitely a place for this quad, and I think they've got something. Remember, this is the first one, the first DJI uh, product that came out wasn't nearly as good as what they have now so I think they're gonna have some really good products in the future and I'm very pleased so far don't forget to like and subscribe and happy flying